one of the most colorful islands in the Caribbean combined with great beaches, food, culture, and friendly people. Welcome to Curaçao. guys welcome back to my channel my name is Airo and today I am in Curacao at my hotel here at the Terra Boutique Hotel situated in Peter Mai Willemstad and join me for some breakfast and with a great view I guess you're wondering this is where my room is situated this is my pretty much a almost like a private balcony it is shared here at the Terra boutique hotel I'm a little bit hungry and I have a long day coming up so I'm going to have breakfast that is served for us here at the hotel and a view of different ships and also the cruise board is over there you can see a cruise ship back there and different other buildings around this old building old town you could say it's called Peter Mai and yeah without further ado my coffee is getting a little bit cold so if you don't mind I'm gonna get right to it so I got some eggs fruits coffee orange juice uh, yogurt with oatmeal I think granola rather and some pieces of bread quite a big breakfast if you ask me but I'm gonna go for it because I do have a long day ahead and I do need to be energized for the day let's go <laughs> today we are going to visit the Willemstad they call it here like Punda and Otterbanda we're gonna visit those places but before that we have uh, been walking around this other area. It's a little bit situated just a little bit outside the city We have the water plant that I just showed you with the mur murals <laughs> and this one is uh, dedicated to the Parque Lucha pa Libertad so the fight for liberty of the slaves you can see them up there and I do believe these are like all of the names there is like a fishing uh, village over there and they do have uh, like a few very small restaurants very typical small restaurants so with all of the stories that you have already seen in the other episodes this is where everything ended for Tula you know like so that's why they have a monument here in his honor and this is where the rebellion like that's the finishing point of it and of his life also so this is a very important grounds for the history of Curacao Nota de sea nada más con nos libertad says Tula we don't uh, wish for anything else but our liberty liber al fin free at last a UNESCO world heritage site as is much of this city that's why it's so important that we don't have just the buildings but this is definitely like not all of the story is good of course but it's part of our history our culture and we as Arubans also we learn about this at school now some of that some of the uh, details of the story obviously I have to admit I did forget much of it to be honest and this is why it's great to come back and refresh and it gives me chills just to talk about it because it you get emotional to think how things went back then and how we've come so far but I believe that we still have so much to improve on <laughs> I never thought I, I would get emotional here and 
I'm sorry. <laughs> Where I'm sitting here right now is close to the park and this is the new Corandon Hotel, the resort that has been remodeled. It used to be the Holiday Beach, right? Holiday Beach Hotel for those who have been here in the past. It looks, by the way, really, really good. Outside here of the this Corandon Hotel, you can do diving and snorkeling. And uh, from what I understood, there's also a like a ship that's sunk right in that vicinity that you could like if you are into if you were linked into like scuba diving and such this is also a pretty interesting place to stay so you can explore this area so here at the entrance of the reef fort there's also the uh like the pathway to the cruise ship Let's explore this area. If you look down, all the steps are bricks from back in the days. The only thing that they did, just a touch up with some, cement. Some cement. See, to keep it see, together. So this is original yes. bricks. And if you see the walls, you can see that those are um, coral stones. Yeah. first port was across the, um, our bay and that is so that one. yes the yellow building with the green awnings that is um, Waterford. These two walls deep in the bay there is a chain. They had like a chain net to, <laughs> to avoid the submarines yeah. to come in unnoticed. Yeah. So there are, there's a lot of submarines that hit the net <laughs> And some of them made, smart. made it out, and some of them are still in the bottom of really? uh, yeah, what? in the bottom of uh, yeah. of our bay. And that's okay. I'm sorry. That's, that's okay. That's okay. okay. <laughs> that's okay. Don't worry. That's interesting. I never heard of that story. Yes. Another thing. So our that's like supermarines from World War Two or from or World War. Yeah. Mostly. Mostly. Yeah. Exactly. Wow, I didn't know that. The Saint Anna Bay is all natural. No man's hand ever touched it. Yeah. So that's why our bay is also so particular and so unique almost. Exactly. Yeah. It's unique. There you have uh, the Queen Emma Bridge, which is better known as our old. swinging old lady. Yes. So that bridge, we're gonna go over there in a moment. Yes. But we're gonna explore this side first. Yes. As you can see, it is built on 16 pontoons that is what keeps the bridge floating um, whenever a vessel a ship a cruise ship a tanker whatever needs to go in or out our bay the swinging old lady will just swing open to the other side of otra banda yeah. on a normal busy day this uh, bridge will open up up to 32 days oh, 32 times a day yeah wow that's a lot that's a lot yeah. So over here you can find many of the souvenir shops this is we are still at the port area and like for example you can buy the Delft blue that I've talked about in my some of my vlogs uh, and I'll mention it again my mother used to collect them and I'll, when I see it I see them I always remember her it's you know it's also very nice to see it and it, they are brought here uh, mainly because of the ties with Holland and that's also very popular over there still to this day. Now, all of this is also part of the Renaissance Resort that's situated as I showed you in the drone shots. Yeah, it's a very nice but modern area and later on we'll head to the old part of the town and also to the downtown part. So he's also going to shop here. He's gonna go into the shops over here. <laughs> Thank you. 
They have like really cool. I'm not much. I have to admit, I, I'm not much into souvenirs the last few years, but they have some really cool looking stuff. So this is the taxi stand and when they have a break they'll play some domino here and I do remember that so that's been here also for a pretty long time. So as you can see the bridge has like like some boats that are beneath it and that's keeping it afloat and so it will when it opens it goes on that side. But we're gonna briefly walk part of the bridge. We're not gonna cross on the outer side yet because we are going to explore this side. But there's there's also a boat coming. Let's see if the bridge goes to open now. We don't know. So it does seem like a pilot boat, probably. Now, is it going to open or is it not? So that bell you're hearing is <laughs> so some people are running so they can get on the other side and so the motor starts on at that side and so since this one is a small one it won't open up completely apparently it will just just be enough for the boat to pass by and the bridge is already swinging so that is where you would normally uh, like be walking off the bridge and going into those streets So this is pretty cool It is pretty cool and we got a better view of the larger bridge also It's the blue curacao They just scoop it up and it's alcohol for you. Let's go back <laughs> We're gonna head on to Otrobano and explore the murals now. We have started the murals part and we are here in one of those neighborhoods on the like the uh, upper side of the hill. So we're close to the lodge, the big bridge. And there's a pretty cool house. We're gonna take some photos here. So while many focus on the lower side of Otrobana, on the top side of the hill there are many more like this one, very colorful and you definitely feel like the Caribbean vibe here in this neighborhood. So right in between these murals, these houses, you can also find small plantations that they have around this place here at like in this part of Otrobanda. Pretty interesting, I did not expect this. So we bought one of these, what's it called again? Lee. It's, so it's a type of... It's a popsicle in a cup. Okay. And mine is a parchita. I don't know the translation of parchita in English. Fruit. Passion fruit, of yes. course, yes. And so I'm gonna try this one. Right. Like this, loosen it up a little bit so it got loosened, and then very carefully you just push it up and you like that. So guys, sorry to disappoint you, but I'm going to enjoy this one <laughs> because otherwise it will pop up and fall somewhere in here <laughs> and I'm not going to have that happen. So after like going through Otrobana and checking out the murals, we got a little bit hungry even after that lead that we just ate. It like opened up our 
appetite and we have now come to the Punda side of town and we're, we will be eating here at Plaza View. Let's go. This is very typical uh, cuisine here, Criollo of Curacao. Let's go. So just as you would find at any food court, this is like also a food court, but obviously from the typical kitchen, you see the ladies preparing the food right in front of you. And there are like, I would say like eight of them. And then you have your seating on this side. I'm gonna, I don't know what I'm gonna get yet, but hopefully it'll be really good. I am pretty excited for these things. I enjoy this probably more than any fine dining. I really do. And someone is trying to distract me. <laughs> Everything is good, my friend. Everything. You are in Curacao, the best place of the world. Yes. The paradise. <laughs> so I am going to eat a, an oka soup, which is, we call it yambo here on the islands. It's this one. And a lot of people don't like it, but I've always liked it. And I have the lady that's the owner of the place. So she's basically preparing these for years and years. Let's talk about the yambo. How, how it is, is it prepared? And I have heard that it's difficult to prepare. She's, she's gonna be speaking in Papiamento, but I'm gonna put the translation uh, under. Yambo is a food that is very saludable. It's a good thing, but yambo is a good thing. It's a good thing to cook. The majority of the food is to cook, but every food is to cook in their system. A mí de mi cocina, la última cosa que me da cocina, es que mi me dice bien verde, bonita así, para un gen de comer. Pero ahora voy a hacer cocina, voy a hacer demasiado, y te voy a hacer arroz, y te voy a hacer pipita, y el color te cambia. Entonces, a mí, para hacer de mi cocina, está bien bien. Yeah. <laughs> No, a mí, a mí, I collect, um, so, I used to eat it, um, my grandmother used to make it, but I believe my mom didn't like it too much, and she was always surprised, I was telling her, she was always surprised that I liked it, even as a kid. Uh -huh. But I know that a lot of people don't like it because it's, uh, like, slimy. <laughs> So I'm, I'm happy to be here and trying this and that even before coming here, Yambo is one of those things that I was hoping to eat, so this is perfect. Thank you very much. <laughs> So this is one of the reasons why people don't like it. It's like a little bit slimy, but let's go for the first one. Come per Udiana. Per Udiana come sa. It's good. It's good. <laughs> This is the funchi that 
is accompanied with the yambo. This is one of the like the very typical. You could have it with. Uh, I heard that some people eat it with rice and with uh, tutu that we ate last time. But the punchi, of course, is the best. Oops. After that great lunch, we are going to walk around a little bit in Punda and starting with this place that I still remember from my childhood that is a market that is situated here in the center and they sell all kinds of products like, like everything you can think of almost plants, vegetables, uh, you know, like household stuff. And certainly for me, this is part of experiencing the local part, the local vibe of this beautiful island and this beautiful city. Along this part of Punda, you can find the fruit market, which is also a great place to walk if you are into eating fruits and vegetables and you want to try different kinds that certainly some of them come from South America if you're not accustomed to them. And this is the place that you want to come and try some of them out. Now we're going to come back for some cocoa water but we're so full right now that we have to walk a little bit so we make some space for it later we are walking here now at the Herenstraat which used to be like the popular street for shopping Nowadays, it's a little bit quiet. Um, and yeah, it's, you know, everything has changed so much last few decades. But I used to like walk here and it used to be so full of people. Great memories. Oh, boom for you, boom for you. Yes, boom for you. Water. Very, very cold. <gasps> Super frio, hobby one. And now, guys, we are here at Tugboat and we're gonna do some snorkeling, some hiking. And I heard that this one is so I'm excited to film this one for you guys, and we're gonna check out this part of the place first and then we'll head for what they have for us for the activities of this afternoon. Let's go. It's decorated with all kinds of stuff, pretty cool. We are doing a short hike now and the slower part of the group is behind. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, this was a, well, he will be explaining to us your yes, name again. My name is Kenji. Kenji. I'm the snorkel guide for today. We are now at Fort Bekenburg. Fort Bekenburg was built in 1703 by the Dutch to protect the Caracas Bay area. Uh, mainly from uh, Spanish invaders, but we also had uh, the English for a while, the French were also here, they were all 
fighting for the island, but eventually the Dutch uh, they took over and they uh, got a hold of the island, mainly because they had a very strong navy. <laughs> The view from up here is so cool. Look at the water. I can definitely see why they decided to build this fort here. You can see all around. I hope you like the snorkeling. I certainly enjoyed every minute of it. It was amazing. And right now I'm back at my hotel and later on go for the dinner. Uh, it should be pretty interesting too. But in the meantime, I'm gonna take a few minutes to enjoy the sunset because the schedule has been quite busy. But this hotel really is got the best view of the island, I think, I don't know but I love it here, just having the ocean, the sound of the ocean constantly, and you can just have a beautiful, beautiful sunset every single night. We're still not done, hang in there, let's go to the next one.
So I ordered a lomito, as you saw, with arroz moro, some garlic sauce, and macaroni salad. We're gonna dig in. Garlic salad on the side, by the way. We got the chimichurri on top. It looks super good. <laughs> Good choice. The macaroni salad is also super good. Let's check out the arroz moro. Damn. Damn. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, mi palabra. <laughs> Everything is right on. And yours? Got no words. <laughs> Got no words. The lumito is like really, really tender. Like really good. And the chimichurri and just about everything, everything on this. And this one is like right right on guys i want to thank you for watching till the end there is more coming up from curacao so in the meantime remember to like share and subscribe bye bye